continuing with this, now that I've got the reference planes, which is like the skeletal form of my my uh, structural beam member, I'm, I'm now going to put on the actual steel itself, as it were. So what I do, and everybody's got a different technique, but I actually will decide on which option is best for creating my beam from the options that are here. And in this case, a blend to go from one shape to another shape, one I-beam shape to another I-beam, but of a different size. I'm going to use that option. Um, I can tell it where I'm going to work. So I can tell it that I want to work on uh, uh, center, left, right plane. I, I could also have uh, specified it by saying set and pick the, pick the plane that I'm working on. But I'm I'm now ready to draft it, and the technique that I use is to draw this to draw the outline, um, kind of an exaggerated form, right? Uh, even although some of the dimensions that I'd be working with are like maybe half an inch or smaller, um, I draw it larger than it's going to be in in life because it gives me some space to uh, to actually. more easily pick things in my model. So if you think of that as kind of an approximate I-beam section, what I'm going to do is now put in my design intent of the relationships for this this I-beam. So using the align command, whatever possible I use the reference lines. Uh, pick what's staying stationary, pick what you're moving and lock it. Stationary on the left, select and lock. Stationary, select and lock. I'll do the same on the other side here if you just watch what I'm doing. And then on the bottom. And don't forget that that and that are lined up and this and this are lined up. So I've got kind of the relationship that I want for the outside of my uh, I-beam section. But I need some dimensions to say that from here to there is going to be the uh, the beam thickness and maybe from there to there would be beam thickness and then in the center here what I'm doing is I can give that for beam thickness but just like I did before if I go left center right place the dimension and then I look for where is it oh it's right in front of me I look for that equality constraint and I click on that. That's me saying that what I want is that should be a symmetrical relationship. So similar to what I did before, if I if I pick a dimension, I can come up here and create add parameter beam thickness also a type parameter. And if I click on this and this and come up here. I held the control key so I got both of them and then I came up here and picked on that to change the size. Now, So far I've kept everything large and the reason for doing that was just because it was easier for me to, to select things. But now if I look up here, if I change my beam thickness to uh, say a half an inch, then I can say apply and see that I got my section here. So, so I've drawn this at one side, if you like, of the extruded form. And I want to repeat the whole thing on the top. So I go edit, top, and this one is going to be the small size section. And I've, I've drawn this again, I can mention exaggerated form, but if I think of it in here as uh, um, I'm just going to draw It doesn't matter too much about the shape as long as it's closed, right? And then what I'm going to do is say, um, um, align that to the top, and lock, side, lock. Oops, wrong way around. Jim, you just you do the what's staying stationary, what's moving, stationary, moving, stationary, moving. Um, remember the uh, 
align that and that, that and that, and uh, this and that. So that's my bottom. And now I'm going to put in some dimensions, say from the top here to this, is going to be uh, the thickness in there to there. I'll put it in that side so you can see it. It's going to be the thickness. And uh, over overall here is uh, the beam thickness, but I also need to say there to there to there. I want an equality constraint. <clears throat> okay, so if I if I go up to my if I pick my dimensions here, this and this and this, and I actually said you are the parameter called beam thickness. I should get my result as I wanted and if I click that I'm finished editing and I look at this in 3D it's going to be exaggerated because I drew it that way but there's my there's my geometry. Now if I go to the the sorry the top not the the floor plan level here um, I can see my structural solid geometry there. I'm going to drag it out and I'm picking a Remember the plane that the dummy was attached to, this one here? Unlock that. And if I use that arrow here to, to drag out the face of the geometry here to, to the center, and lock it, if I look at this in 3D, that's what I've got. Why is my... Yep, that's fine. That's my model line. I wasn't quite sure what that was. So let me go back to the left view. Okay, let me change the values a little bit to make sure that this is working. So if I go up here and say the beam depth small, I'm going to set as 6 inches. Beam depth large, I'm going to set as 12 inches. And apply, that's what I expect it to look like. And if I look at it here, I'm ready to work with that.